Welcome back everybody. Today in the Mastering IELTS Writing Task 2 course, we're going to look at how to impress the IELTS examiner with our essay. What do the IELTS examiners want from you? What do they want to see if they're going to grade you at a band 7 or above level? Well, there is a certain way which IELTS writing is assessed. It's not like the reading and the listening where you complete your uh, test paper and you get answers right or you get answers wrong. Writing and speaking, quite different. Um, so there are four categories of assessment and anybody that knows a little bit about IELTS already will know that these are called the band descriptors. So there are four band descriptor categories and those are task response, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource and grammatical range and accuracy. Now some of these terms, some of these words might not make much sense to you. Uh, we're going to look at each one in turn. So let's start by looking at task response. So, according to the official IELTS writing band descriptors, to achieve band 7 and above in task response, you must address all parts of the task, present a clear position throughout the response, and present, extend, and support main ideas. In other words, you need to write about everything in the question. So try not to leave any uh, part of the task unaddressed. You also need to make it very clear what your opinion is. Even if your opinion is that you are not sure if you agree or disagree, you need to make that clear. You might write something like, personally, I, while I do agree with this side of the argument, I also have some sympathy with the other side of the argument, as long as you present an opinion. Bear in mind that if you have a discussion question which doesn't ask for your opinion, then you do not need to give your opinion, and it's probably a good idea you do not give your opinion. But the discussion questions are fairly rare, and you can learn about discussion questions in one of my other videos. You need to also develop your ideas and arguments, explain your point and say why that point matters. So develop this idea and give examples to help the reader understand your point a little bit better. As for coherence and cohesion, this is all about having the essay flow nicely. And according to the band descriptors, to achieve a band seven and above, you must logically organize information and ideas. There must be a clear progression throughout. You need to use a range of cohesive devices appropriately, and you must produce a clear central topic within each paragraph. So, in other words, your essay should be in logical order. You start with an introduction, then you move on to body paragraph one, then body paragraph two, and then a conclusion. Which order your body paragraph one and body paragraph two go in depends on the question type you have, but it's often you'll start with the pros, then move on to the cons, especially if it's a discussion question. This also applies to the sentences within paragraphs. For example, you will always start with a topic sentence, then you're likely to move on to a support sentence, and then an example. You would not start a paragraph with an example. It would be illogical. Secondly, you need to link sentences and paragraphs with words like however, therefore, furthermore, as a result, despite this, on top of that. These are called cohesive devices. They help to link the ideas in sentences and between sentences together. And finally, one topic per paragraph. Stay focused on your topic. Try not to include too many different ideas within a paragraph. Ideally, you want to keep to one idea in a paragraph and just develop it to the point 
where it's a really, really well argued idea. Let's move on to lexical resource. Now this word essentially means vocabulary, lexical vocabulary. So it's like your resource of vocabulary, how much vocabulary that you have and how much vocabulary that you can use well. And according to the band descriptors to achieve band seven and above in this area, you must use a sufficient range of vocabulary to allow some flexibility and precision. Use less common lexical items with some awareness of style and collocation. And you may produce occasional errors in word choice, spelling and word formation, but these rarely interrupt communication. In other words, you need to show a wide or a flexible range of vocabulary. So demonstrate your knowledge of synonyms and demonstrate your ability to paraphrase rather than using the same words over and over again. And be precise. So avoid words like nice. There are usually much more precise adjectives out there than nice. It's the same for words like good. You might use instead of a word like good, which could be like good morally, it could be good functionally. You could move to a word like effective. Effective is much more, well, effective than good. And you need to use less common words and phrases. So less common lexical items just means less common words and phrases. And you need to display your understanding of how these words fit together. Fit together is a collocation, and a collocation is how words fit together, if that makes sense. So um, you, a collocation is just basically words which look natural next to other words, and you're showing your understanding of this in English. Finally, you can make a few mistakes with vocabulary. You are permitted to make a couple of mistakes, spelling, word formation, word choice, but do try your best to be accurate. Finally, that leaves us with grammatical range and accuracy, essentially grammar, range and accuracy, along with punctuation too. So to score band seven and above in this area, you must use a variety of complex structures. You must produce frequent error-free sentences. And lastly, you must have good control of grammar and punctuation. But again, you may make a few errors. So in other words, you must use a range of sentence types and word orders. So try to mix up your sentence um, structures. Don't just be very, very repetitive and use the same sentence structures all the time. However, do try to use some simple sentences too. This helps to create a sense of rhythm in the uh, essay. You do a long sentence and then a shorter sentence, then a long sentence and then a shorter sentence. Avoid making mistakes in the majority of your sentences. You will need to score, you will need to um, write error-free sentences perhaps 50% of the time. More than 50% of the time will hopefully score you a band eight, but try to aim for half of your sentences being error-free, grammatically error-free. So no grammar mistakes in about half of your sentences in the essay. Finally, you need to demonstrate your command of punctuation. So use commas and colons appropriately. Use full stops appropriately. Um, use apostrophes appropriately, for example, with possessive S. Um, and demonstrate that you are comfortable with grammar. One word about apostrophes is, um, yes, use them for possessive nouns, for example. Uh, but do not use them for contractions. We should not be writing in contractions in the essay. For example, you have the words do and not. Do not contract those words to don't. No won't, no wouldn't, no shouldn't, no can't, no I'm, no he's. You need to separate them into their two component words. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's not a good thing. Okay, so 
Quick summary, band descriptors, starting with task response. Then we move to coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, and grammar. So in task response, we need to address all parts of the task. We need to clearly show our opinion from the beginning, unless you're in a discussion essay. You need to develop your ideas, explain and support these ideas, and try to use examples to help the reader understand. In coherence and cohesion, we need to order our essay logically, link our sentences and paragraphs with cohesive devices, write about one topic only in each body paragraph and just develop that topic, and stay focused on what you're writing about. For vocabulary or lexical resource, we need to show a wide range of vocabulary and be precise with this language. We need to try to use less common words and phrases and show our understanding of collocations, how language naturally fits together. And finally, we need to aim for accurate spelling and word formation. As for the grammar, we need to show a range of grammar, both simple and complex. So use a range of sentence types. Avoid making too many grammatical mistakes. Aim for half the essay. Well, that's quite a challenge, but that's what you should aim for. Try to use punctuation accurately, apostrophes, full stops, commas. And as I said there, yes, try to aim for 50% minimum sentence accuracy. So if you hit all of these requirements, you're sure to score a band seven or above in the IELTS exam.